Okay, so this is part two of our attempts to make the ultimate five day Greek road trip, looking at just all the historical sites from lots of different eras. I'm not even gonna begin to try and lay out the entire premise for you because you should have watched part one. It's right there in the title, guys, come on. <laughs> um, so, where we left off, we were in a surprisingly rainy Sparta. Um, this doesn't usually happen. Of course, you know, everyone's gonna, oh, you shouldn't have gone in October. Yeah, okay, we get it. Mm. it you know, obviously it was a lot less expensive, a lot less busy, but you know, normally uh, Greece is a fair bet. And even when I was in Left Harder in October, <clears throat> it was beautiful sunshine, probably actually even slightly clearer skies because there's a lot of, sort of haze when it's really, really hot in the middle of the day. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you can actually probably see further into the distance. The mountains are probably sort of crisper on the horizon with mm. this sort of cooler air, but anyway, it had been raining a whole load and kind of really starting to cut into our plans. And so, Dave's soul. Yeah, that's <laughs> So I got up early the next morning and did manage to catch just fleetingly these really beautiful sunrise shots of uh, Sparta. Mm. I probably should have mentioned this up the top of the previous one. When you go to Athens, you've got all these amazing temples, you know, surviving at height. And, you know, that's exactly what you picture when you think of Greek history. I think most people who go to Sparta are probably going to be disappointed. And I say that with just all the asterisks and parentheses. Because, <laughs> look, what people want... They want the Leonidas stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, goodness knows, uh, you know, Zack Snyder's 300 is <laughs> gonna drive enough. Just even just, you know, we, pretty much everyone learns about ancient Greece yeah. in primary school. And so you have this curiosity about Sparta, which is why, to it's jump true. to the conclusion before everyone jumps down my throat, this is why I thought that despite the fact there's not a real wealth of material remains from ancient Sparta in mm. classical times, which is the one everyone's picturing, it's still worth going to, to just satisfy your curiosity. There's not nothing to see, mm. but just to be like, yeah, Sparta, we heard about that, we've been there. Just bear in mind, it doesn't have the same sort of material culture as Athens did, and that was the same in antiquity. They weren't making as many sort of monumental structures as no, the Athenians. Relatively quite Spartan. Yeah, oh. Hey! <laughs> I feel like I missed that very uh. obvious wordplay. I shouldn't have gone in there <laughs> Famously, Sparta didn't have any walls. Uh, yep. They made a point and they said, you know, our troops are the walls. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. I think most people would, they, look, let's face it, they at least want to see a big hole that you can kick someone into. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry that I never saw anyone get kicked into a hole. Are you though? <laughs> I didn't witness a man die in front of me. <laughs> well, my, my, my regrets. <laughs> I, I, I would almost volunteer. <laughs> but suffice to say, even though, yeah, there's not a wealth of things to see in Sparta, it, I think it's absolutely worth going and I'm really glad we did. Yes. But this is the funny thing, and this is what I mentioned from last time. If you can just move away from classical Greek history, remember that, like 500 BC, just 10 miles away is the site of Mistras. And this is genuinely one of the most significant historical sites in the whole of Greece. Wow. And I'm not exaggerating. In terms of the actual history of Greece, this place is so important and it's massive and there's so much there and it's in incredible condition. But because most people don't know about the Byzantines, it's not really high on people's list. I think a lot of people sort of maybe aim for Sparta and then maybe they look around and say, like, oh, what's to do here? Oh, Mistras, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it was in one of my top three highlights, I reckon, of, of, of my Greece trip. But that's taking into account that I was getting, um, yeah, sodden for <laughs> the first couple of days. I was getting rained on in Athens and so on. But yeah, Mistras was gorgeous. Um, really something different. Um, and there was that, that that we ended up. I think we finished in this in this little chapel with these um, magnificent, pristine frescoes there, and oh, just um, it's a great view from there as well. It's just it's such a magnificent place. Yeah, it was it was such a special morning. We again we got up early, uh, we drove down there. The weather was holding. <laughs> <laughs> um, every finger and toe on my body was crossed, like, come on, come on, come on. Um, we actually, there's two, because it's such a huge site, there's actually two gates. Uh, we started up top, um, which is a pretty good shout, because I think fewer people do that. Uh, we can't possibly go over all the sort of ruined 
churches and monastic sites and fortifications and every iteration of the site. That we will most mm. certainly do in a Byzantine episode in the future. Mm. My goodness, I cannot tell you how much I am not having the conversation about there's no such thing as the Byzantines. It was a <laughs> word that was invented. We know! Everyone knows! <laughs> they describe themselves as the Romans. They were described as Romans in antiquity but it's a really helpful distinction between classical Rome, you know, based in the city of Rome versus the Greek-speaking Eastern <laughs> Roman Empire. So not interested in all the sort of snarky kind of things about that. It's a useful term. It's a beautiful word. I love it. I'm going to keep yeah. saying it and no one's going to convince me otherwise. No, I'm happy I'm happy to go along saying it along with you. Well, that's because you're a lovely person, Sean. So yeah, Miss Drass, being there was like such a huge relief. Like I was just so high on endorphins. Look, we even got this rainbow. Just look at it. Yes. The rainbow, it's, oh, it's, it's so good. Um, and we just saw what we could in the time that we had. It was quite funny. When we uh, left out of the top gate, you could just see all these higher cars, because higher cars are almost all white. Yeah. You could just see them all exactly. parked up the top. <laughs> Always feel like we're, you know, kind of like a bit of a target, because we're so easy to spot. But <laughs> there whatever. is a real uniformity. It was the same in, in Turkey with the, with the higher cars. They were all white Fiats. Yeah. I, I, I wonder why. And then by the time we actually got down to the bottom gate, the blue skies had properly come out. And so now the sight was just singing in the mm. sunshine. Um, and I was just having one of my best days of the entire year. <laughs> so look, um, I'm gonna leave a space here to maybe just run a supercut of more footage, or maybe we don't have time for that. I don't know, this episode's gonna run long <laughs> because of course it is. Uh, but look, make a priority of seeing Mistras. It mm. is one of the most significant Byzantine sites in the whole of Greece, and you, you just, you gotta do it. Yeah, yeah. So feeling, infinitely better we drove back to town we briefly went in the um, Sparta archaeological site as I mentioned there's not a lot of material remains when you see this is like this okay this is a few things it's all later stuff it's Roman structures mm. Byzantine structures again like I said I think everyone mm. wants to see like where's the Leonidas stuff and there's <laughs> And I, I swear, <clears throat> there's, apart from some like ruined basilicas and stuff, it's all cool, and a, and a theatre which is being restored, but you know, that's that's pretty cool. It's all later stuff. The only thing there, contemporary to like classical era Greece and Leonidas, potentially, is this course of bricks here. <laughs> you see that one? Not the, not the upper bit, that was a later addition. Not even that whole wall, just that course of bricks there. There's your Leonidas stuff. <laughs> That's what I mean when I say, like, look, if you're looking yeah. for that stuff, you're going to be disappointed. But, again, go for the, the classical era Greece, stay for the Byzantine stuff. Mm. We'll not be disappointed. We also briefly saw this, the, um, I can't make these air quotes quite hard enough. <laughs> you need to hear the sort of air wafting on the microphone for how hard <laughs> I'm air quoting right now. He's doing. The tomb of Leonidas, which is no such thing. <laughs> oh. It's just not. Oh. Uh, but cool, whatever. Um, also, got a chance to give these boys their first ever, I think, Fredo Cappuccino from Coffee Island. Yes, that was a first. And yeah, that was that was uh, life changing. <laughs> it was delicious. I know this is the nice thing. The previous episode had so much prefacing. I didn't want to put this backstory in there as well. But actually, this trip was a really nice culmination of one of our earlier episodes. So if you go back and watch the Jordan episodes and to be honest, I'd rather if you just watched the Petra episode, which is the mm. one with fewest views, and maybe ignore the other two, because I hadn't quite got the audio quality down right then, I was still speaking a bit too fast. And it's a bit embarrassing, but we did have <laughs> this amazing Jordan tour de force, which finished off with uh, Jordan being locked down, because this was like yeah. March 2020, and we just barely got out. That was dramatic. It was very dramatic. Um, and at the time, in our haste to sort of just get literally any flight out of Jordan, because by a certain cutoff day, there would be no flights, no ferries, no roads. You could not even leave on foot. Just, mm. We weren't going to put that to the test, but there was be nothing. So we literally just had to get a flight to some other place and then yeah. worry about getting home from there. So in our haste, we booked a sort of a, co a connecting flight to Athens. Yes, we did, yeah. And I was... Panic bought a fl yeah, yeah, obsolete flights to Athens. Yeah, so I was encouraged by, I was like, look, look, look guys in the price, like, look, I've been to Athens before, you're gonna love it, I'll show you around, we'll see the <laughs> stuff, it's gonna be great. And then EasyJet were like, oh, surprise, we're actually sending a rescue flight. Yeah, this is after having been on hold to EasyJet for five hours. I think we were playing cards in our accommodation, just we trying to get through so as to uh, yeah. try and figure out what would happen. And when, after that long, nothing, 
we just panic bought those flights. But we, we were kind of amazed because normally with like a budget airline, like anything goes wrong, you'd expect them to be like, <laughs> yeah, good luck, losers. <laughs> so we couldn't believe that they actually remembered us. And like, well, like again, gates were slamming all over Europe. Uh, yeah. They were like, no, we've specifically put on a flight to get you out of Jordan. We were like, wow, guys. Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a pretty unprecedented moment in in our you know history of well, our lives anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so all of that was part of the Jordan saga, um, and so we didn't get to go to Greece in that instance. But I said to the boys, look, don't worry, we will absolutely go to Athens. I will get you a Fredo cappuccino. I will show you around. You will love yes. it. So this five day road trip was. That it was finally getting the three of us back together yep. and seeing all this stuff and sharing it together. And now that we're in Sparta and the sun has come out, now it was like, yes, this yes. is what we were talking about. Yes, indeed. We'd been locked down <laughs> between um, Jordan and Greece. Oh, Greece. And, yeah. yeah. And and this was our this is our time to travel again. But yes, this this day was particularly wonderful. I thought it was, and it was about to get better because probably. The second most important Byzantine site in Greece. Though I'm going to have to, I, I don't want to get into a tier list too much. Because, uh, <laughs> uh, after this, and I'll explain more at the end, but we're going to get to Thessaloniki. And I was not ready for the walls of Thessaloniki. Like, <laughs> they're, they're so, they're so big. That's, that's, a, that's a story for next episode. But like, Thessaloniki, again, has like some of the most bonkers, incredible Byzantine stuff. Wow. So, but I still stand by Mistras being the sort of the pretty much the most important Byzantine site in Greece because you pretty much at the end there, right before the Ottomans took Constantinople, you had Constantinople and Mistras. This wow. sort of small slice <laughs> in sort of around what was formerly Sparta, mm. mainly because it's so mountainous. It's just like you, you you're not sending like troops yeah. over the mountain. It's just it's actually quite a defensible spot. So you have Mistras and then down to the coast. Monem Vassia. Oh yeah, that, that was that. That would be uh, again another feature in my top three highlights of the trip. This was just incredible, and not least because again the blue skies just made it. You can kind of see, especially from air, this does kind of almost resemble like a sort of Greek Gibraltar. Yeah. And while it has loads of sort of levels going back to antiquity, the Byzantine stuff and then a bit of Venetian stuff and kind of creeping into the Ottoman era as well um, is, is mainly what's visible. Um, and it's just, again, we don't have time to go through every single like church and, and bit of ruins, but it is, it's somewhere really incredible. You get to the gate and you can see people wheeling these big sort of like trucks full mm. of like uh, mineral water and everything through the gate because there's a certain point where cars can go no further and you just yeah. have to rest on foot. I wish I could, I had a teleportation device for that location <laughs> and just, just occasionally just sup a, a cocktail from, uh, <laughs> from Mon Ambassia looking out to the, to the sea. And that's the trade off because this was the furthest south we'd got mm. and I could perfectly understand if someone like sort of sees the diagram of where we went and they'd be like, oh, well, that's a bit far. Do we really have to? For Mon Invasia, it is 100% worth it. Yeah. And to be honest, it's always the way with these sites. Like mm. the fact that we did have to go this extra distance and say there's not really an airport that are particularly nearby at all. Yep. Uh, there's no real other transport link. So it's, it's you know, you have to really put the effort in to get yeah. there. It makes it even more special. We kind of had a similar thing on our Turkey road trip that was just a couple of weeks ago with getting to Troy. Mm. It was like a big sort of loop out of our way, uh, you know, adding a sort of another sort of four hours or something to get there and of course like four hours back. Yeah. But seeing that was just so, uh, I, I can't really describe it properly mm -hmm. or articulately at least. <laughs> it just meant it was just so special to be there and to see it. Mm. And you know, Troy is such a famous place and this incredible iconic site, even though it's not this sort of huge looming, I mean, the, the one in the film looks more like a sort of medieval castle, the sort of scale yeah, of the yeah. fortifications they have, but just getting to see Troy, the fact that we had to travel that extra distance to get there, actually, if anything, made it more special. Yeah, I mean, th this is the kind of place, <clears throat> even if, say, if you if you had no uh, historic interest, this is the place you'd want to kind of romance your, uh, your lady. <laughs> it's just such a beautiful spot um, and you've, you've got the uh, obviously you've got the, the castle on the top and and yeah you've got to put some some legwork into to seeing all that 
but uh, there are m multiple places to recline and uh, and enjoy a coffee or a, or a cocktail and or just you know buy some trinkets. I think I got a, a souvenir for Mandy there. Yeah, um, I mean, it just even if you ignore all of the history, why would you? But you can just wander <laughs> the streets and be like, yeah, that checks out. This place is amazing. Mm. Uh, it's it's just the best. Mm. Um, so yeah, Monenvastia was incredibly special and yeah, like a real high point of the trip. Yeah. And as you say, like the thing is, because it's so much harder to get back, <laughs> like with Athens, I know I can, you know, I can get a flight there and I can see more stuff. So mm. it's like, oh man, I didn't get to see some stuff this time, but I, I think, I, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I have to kind of redo Athens in a way to see it in the sunshine. And because, you know, there's so much uh, uncovered stuff that, uh, well, so, so many, Things I hadn't seen because we had a we had a short time there. <laughs> well, Sean, look, mate, you're in luck because <laughs> I still have a bunch of trips. We've got to see yeah. all the Mycenaean stuff up to like uh, Thebes and Volkos. Wow. And um, fantastic. Yeah, don't worry, dude. That opportunity will absolutely present itself. <laughs> nice. Anyway, so. <clears throat> As we said, we weren't staying at Mon Invasia, but that would have been a decent shout, to be honest. Mm. We had to get to our next location, and, okay, full disclosure, I actually, and Sean was doing the driving, so you'll have to ask him, but I really enjoyed <coughs> this drive. It was through the mountains, though not oh, yeah, yeah. aggressively so. Like, it was kind of a manageable, nice route. Um, unfortunately, it did get dark, so the last sort of hour and a half or so was in darkness. So we didn't, if we hadn't had that, we would have been able to enjoy the coast. We're literally just going all the way up this particular sort of finger of the Peloponnese. Mm. We're starting down here at Mon Invasia, which is almost <laughs> at the bottom, and going all the way up to this gulf, which is where Nafplio is. Yeah, this is one of Dave's favorites. I think Dave had uh, uh, singled this out as a place to try to stay at because uh, because he liked it so much. And now I now I know why. It's, it's incredibly beautiful, uh, just a beautiful uh, coastal, uh, a city and and it's gorgeous in the night and the food is amazing and well you say the rest well no dude you said it perfectly like <laughs> when when i encounter things that you, you might have noticed when i encounter things that i love i suddenly become very inarticulate can i just say <laughs> the english language does not contain enough superlatives it's true it's true you, oh it's incredible it's lush it's amazing I often edit back these episodes i'm like <laughs> oh damn it that's too many incredibles in one paragraph <laughs> i know you just that's need, bad writing you need, you need to consult the thesaurus before you begin okay and look up the word beautiful and, and try and <laughs> try to find all the synonyms yeah. um anyway yeah why not Nafplio is an incredibly special place. And the funny thing is, it is also the best possible jumping off point for mm. all the stuff we're about to see in the subsequent mm. days. But Nafplio itself, I try and explain it to people like this. You know when you're a kid um, and you know you've got a, a piece of like printer paper and you're bored on a uh, rainy afternoon and you just thought, right, I'm gonna design my ultimate little like castle city island. It's gonna be on the beach and it's gonna have a castle that's really hot. No, two castles, one that's hot, no, three castles. And it's gonna have a cliff arch and it's gonna be really hot and sunny all the time. It's like, yeah, dude, we have that. It's called Nathaleo and it's unbelievably Amazing. Yeah, it's, um, it's such a delight just to even just wander around in the in, well at, at night and and you took us on that that uh, that coastal walk in the morning that was um, yeah resplendent. Yeah, there's a, <laughs> a lap you can take. We actually did this the following day. We'll put this in now. There's a lap you can take. We sort of start uh, at this beach here, and then you walk around the bottom of the cliffs. Interestingly, the fence kind of gates there are sort of closed to, that sort of suggests it's kind of locked off. Mm. But you can see people walking back there and it's very easy just to walk around and just follow this mm. footpath that is clearly a footpath that was meant to be a footpath. Yeah, yeah. And the highlight, as well as all the incredible views, <laughs> uh, is got to be this cliff arch. It's yeah. slightly spoiled by the graffiti, but what are you going to do? Um, just the stuff that dreams made of. And again, as you might be able to tell, this wasn't our first time in Nafplio. We, uh, I'd first come here in 2018 and just absolutely fallen in love with the place. And funny enough, now I've been back a couple of times. I'm now gonna have to put a cordon around it because I can already feel the kind of, that special vibe starting to wear off because I'm a lot more familiar with it. I was like, oh my goodness, it's just like seeping through my fingers. So I'm like, right, <laughs> you're not allowed to go back to Nafplio for another five years at least. Really? You imposed that rule on yourself? Yeah, because otherwise, oh. like this place, which at one point I would have said like, right, this is just my favorite place in the whole world. Yeah. 
Um, I probably should have saved that for a reveal in a video, like, oh, I named my number one. Like, it's, it's, it's na it was Nathalie, at least. Wow. Now I'm not so sure. It, it really jockeys for first and second place Ooh. with Harnia. Uh, Those kind of go back and forth. Look, okay. Watch the Crete episodes. Um, look, both are amazing. Yes. What can I say? So look, again, even though Nathalie has incredible history, so for example, this are you kidding me? It's a Venetian fortification up on the top of the mountain. <laughs> Once again, this is what really bugs me about... This is what's going to be really hard about getting people to watch the Venetian episodes. There's certain history content mm. that everyone clicks on if it's about Vikings first and foremost, yep. Romans, ancient Egyptians, yep. that gets all the clicks. Um, anything that's kind of beyond... You know, you start getting to the, the early modern period, anything to do with gunpowder, mm. no one's clicking on it. Yeah. And yet, you look at this like, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> I mean, what is wrong with the YouTube algorithm? What's wrong with you people? Look at this! <laughs> I know it was built to defend against cannons and it was built in like the sort of 1600s, but are you seeing this castle up here? <laughs> this is ridiculous! <laughs> and it, you don't even get a full impression of it from the ground because it splays out across the top of this huge sort of rocky outcrop. And so, it's only when you're up there you realise just how many different bastions and bits of mm. kind of fortification are up there. It's utterly nuts. Matched only by how embarrassingly easy the castle actually fell. But I am holding that story for when we do the Venetian episodes so that you'll at least have a reason <laughs> to come back. Those are going to go up pretty soon. I say my hope is if you're seeing this about six months after it's been uploaded, there should be some Venetian episodes uploaded. I don't know, man. These episodes take so long to make. <laughs> There's also, again, like I said, there's technically three castles. There's like an older sort of Venetian fortification that was also, there was some Frankish uh, and Byzantine fortifications there. And it's like, okay, who put that apartment block there? Oh no. Like, are you guys kidding with this? It's now derelict and it's just sitting there in the middle of this like these beautiful castle ruins. It's like, great move guys, real, real, real solid. Future, future planning there. Um, but the one that probably- You hate Nafleo! <laughs> uh, yeah, I can just hear the guys like, oh my goodness, I can't believe you hate Nafleo! <laughs> yeah, that's coming. <laughs> probably the most eye-catching castle is Borzi, which is the Ooh. one out in the channel. That sounds just a delight to even say. Doesn't Bor it just? Borzi. Uh, I don't know if, it, I mean, it was built I'm just like, copying you, I, I, I don't actually know how to speak Greek or... Yeah, I mean, I think the architect was Venetian or at least Italian, so, you know, that, that checks out. Mm. Um, got to roll the R's a little bit. That's uh, absolutely beautiful, just sitting out in the channel there, just mwah, chef's kiss. Mm. Um, so, we were staying in this apartment, which actually overlooked one of the former mosques of uh, Nafplio. There's a couple of those sort of dotted in the skyline that you can just make out if you know what you're looking for. Um, so again, we got there pretty late at night. I can't actually remember what we did for dinner that night. It doesn't matter. Well, in Nafplia, yeah, we had insanely giant pork steaks. Oh, that was that night? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, there's this. There's a lot of restaurants by the waterfront. Uh, they're not the cheapest, but the views there are it's, it's splendid, utterly insane. And and those and the the locals rocked up and just pl played some some folk music um, while we were there. It was very very cute and quaint and, and yeah. Oh, I, I I really loved it. Just great pork, vibes. pork steaks the size of your face. Oh, isn't insane? Yeah. Um, that was that was pretty great. So next morning. We got a reasonably early start, and again, this is why I'd ever been to sort of Nafplio in the first place, is because I wanted to see Mycenae. Mm. Now, Mycenae, again, this is something that most people who you know have a passing familiarity, I keep wanting to avoid saying normies, because that sounds so <laughs> pejorative, so like them and us. Um, and considering most people who are actually seriously into history would consider me a normie, I probably don't <laughs> want to throw stones in that particular glass house. <laughs> But, Fair enough. Mycenae, you really got to know about this place. This is, this is where the Mycenaeans take mm. their, at least their modern name. This is Bronze Age Greece. Yeah. So we are talking uh, 1200 BC and earlier. Yes. Uh, as far as the Iliad, we're talking the Trojan Wars. Wow. Uh, this is that culture. So I was a little disappointed. It wasn't raining at the very least. Mm. I was a little disappointed that this time around seeing Mycenae, um, it was grey skies, but it was incredibly peaceful. We had the site entirely to ourselves for about the first 45 minutes to an hour, <laughs> which means we got to see the Lion Gate completely without people, which is rare. Um, you, you rarely get mm. sort of a full shot of this with like no one 
kind of in the way. Mm. And it was just so peaceful getting to go around and just film the different parts of the site. Um, that was really special. Yeah, it, it did seem extremely, uh, it did seem very grand, especially that, that Lion Gate. Yeah. yeah. And this is one of the crazy things as well. Um, you know, it's one thing having all this sort of classical era Greek stuff, you know, in the capital, it's like, wow, that's like 2,500 years old, or maybe slightly less, and you know, that's, wow, that's, that's crazy. But with the Bronze Age stuff, the fact that this is now pushing three, three and a half thousand years old, yeah. and it's still standing there at places at pretty impressive height. Yeah, I, it's the Bronze Age stuff that, that really uh, triggers my curiosity, because, you know, there's, there's just there's, there's much more mystery kind of enshrouding all these uh, locations and, and relics. Yeah, and even if you don't know much about the Homeric epics, I'm definitely not an expert, but like, it's like, how can you not get excited about this? The fact that mm. it's like so archaic and ancient that even the ancient Greeks, the ones they build the Parthenon, yeah. were like, no, that's ancient history. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, and, and again, the fact that they're surviving at such incredible height, and there's more too. Something we saw a lot of over the next few days was Tholos tombs. Mm. These sometimes called like beehive oh, they're tombs. They're amazing, yeah. Um, and they're essentially these incredible sort of domed structures. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get this statistic wrong. You know what, no wait, this is why I said before I was gonna put anything that I can potentially get wrong in the voiceover. I'm just gonna insert into the lower third. But the <laughs> the Tholos um, on the, like, the side of Mycenae was one of the sort of largest domes before the Pantheon in Rome. Oh, Don't get that confused with the Parthenon. No, no, no. It's just that words. one crucial consonant, but <laughs> very different things. Yes, indeed. Um, so yeah, for the longest time, as best we can determine, this was the largest dome in the world. Wow. Wow, for how long was that the case? Do you know? Well, I mean, considering I'm gonna, I'm gonna put. That, that'll be <laughs> rather than get this wrong here. I've, no, my, fair enough. Future fair self enough. is just gonna put the answer <laughs> in the comments after Please I've do. done my research properly but and it, not it, made a it was an arresting, it was an arresting experience being in there. So there's actually two on the side, which uh, when you put them side by side, they're remarkably similar. This one has been labelled the <clears throat> Treasury of Atreus. Wow. Which is just something that Schliemann kind of put on the site. Don't get me on a big diatribe about Schliemann. Oh no. I mean. What Don't, get him started. Don't get him started. Um, I say to those are the ones that still have the roof on. There is also another one where the roof has collapsed, which you can briefly see, which is just kind of behind where the museum is. The museum is, is, itself is, is pretty good. And then after that, we just quickly drove, you know, if you drive about sort of four or five minutes, obviously if you know where to look, there's a couple of other Tholos tombs mm. sort of hidden in the sort of undergrowth near the site, but still standing pretty impressively. I mean, the, mm. the, uh, the domes have collapsed, but you can still very much see the shape. And... Mm. So again, what followed, this day was kind of sort of mixed Bronze Age fetch quest. There was some other stuff besides. So after that, we went to the bridge of Arcadico, if I got that name right, which has this interesting distinction. I mainly knew about this from sort of Facebook groups where people love to post this with the whole thing of, it's the oldest bridge in the world that's still used. Oh. And it's like, mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, look, okay, so super old, tick. Mycenaean yep. bridge, great, yeah. Yep. Funny thing is, there's no river running underneath it, and it looks like there hasn't been for a great long time. <laughs> the road passes just right next to it. I mean, thank goodness. I mean, you don't want to run a car so, across all that. It's, it's a redundant bridge now. Yeah, it, 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 I swear Robin Hood men in tights did this joke already, but like, I'm sure in antiquity, like the, because the course of the river would have been different, this bridge yeah. would have been kind of necessary, but you look at it as like, that's, that, you don't even really have to jump to clear that. You could just step <laughs> over it. But, but cool, yeah, really super old Mycenaean bridge. That I am absolutely here for, so cool. Mm. And that's right by Kazama. There was a sort of collapsed Tholos just there, but the uh, Acropolis of Kazama, that's pretty awesome. It's a Mycenaean sort of citadel up the top of the hill there, but you can also see this masonry, which is clearly much later. So the Byzantines had a go at sort of reinforcing this with some of their own kind of material later on to sort of make this into a sort of makeshift castle. Um, so that was, that was pretty great. It's just a sort of short stop kind of walking up to that. That's pretty mm. impressive. Woo! It's Dave from the future! Uh, not sure why everyone from the future is speaking like ghosts, but sure. So yeah, this is Dave recording after the fact. You can hear that because I actually have some proper acoustic treatment on this portion of the recording. Well, I've been in the edit for an age, and I was trying to pull this second half down to a manageable length, but that was involving cutting out so much that eventually I figured, why am I doing this? So we are battle of five armies in this series and bumping it up to a trilogy. 
next episode well just tons of things still got loads to crack through and we'll also sum up the 5d itinerary and all the things we saw if you're potentially interested in doing something similar and i'm recording this without sean right now because well it's a bit much to make him drive over an hour here for a two minute segment but with these episodes where we goof around and take forever to get to the point we have started a podcast together where we're doing nothing but that so you can catch us on the double yellow parking space where all the conversations we have on the road and while we're traveling spill out into an episodic format you can also catch the antalya episode which we recorded not all that long ago which is i mean kind of like this episode we kept mentioning so why not let your curiosity get the better of you and all of the things you're expecting me to say look we are still in the early game where just one new subscriber makes a lot of difference so please you would be helping us out a lot if you'd subscribe and also follow us on instagram and twitter a lot of our history stuff goes up on those too and all the music you've been hearing is ours so check out the band camp but oh now this is too many calls to action so you've already forgotten all of them okay so revision double yellow parking space podcast please subscribe follow us on twitter and instagram and bandcamp.com is where all the music is if you want to support the channel that's the place to do it got it okay nice one catch you for the part three